In the last video, I completely dogged on my C5-Z06. Well, today I'm going to tell you the good things about it and why this is probably the best bang for buck that you can currently buy. Probably the best sports car under $30,000 at the moment. This car is an LS6 with 405 horsepower from 2002. This car is probably equally as fast as my 2019 Mustang GT. Maybe it's a little bit slower, just a little bit slower than that car was. But this car driving wise is absolutely fantastic. I don't know how this is a track edition of the C5, but this car rides more smooth than my 2019 Mustang did. It's more dailyable almost. With that being said, this car does have adjustable suspension so you can lower them from the factory. And I believe if it was lowered and possibly stiffened just a little bit, this car would be an animal on the track. We're off to go get this car smog tested right now because state of Wisconsin requires me to smog test my car before I can get my license plates, but it's illegal to drive without license plates. Yeah, it's a whole headache. Wisconsin fix your system because it is so complicated. So good news the Z06 is now officially registered But I still don't have license plates for my car State of Wisconsin. Where are my plates now the registration is technically legal Let's go for a drive and talk about why this car is such a fantastic buy at the moment because I Still can't believe how cheap they are as I was saying in the last video I dogged on this car quite a bit, but obviously I bought this car. I spent over $25,000 on this vehicle. I know the positives of the car. The whole point of the last video, five things I hate about the car, what it's like in reality living with it, was to point out all the flaws the car had because this is a 2002 Corvette. It's a Chevy product, a GM product from right before they started to have the financial troubles that it did, or actually in the period of the financial troubles that they were having. But at the same time, there is a reason why the C5Z06 will go down in history and it's probably a top five Corvette of all time. That's a big bum. Ooh. During this period, cars were still very analog. Right, there wasn't too many driver assists that are keeping us on the roads. During this point in history, it was kind of the tipping point of too much technology and not enough technology. That's what everyone says. It's the best of the analog period. You hear that word all the time. The E46 M3, the Carrera GT, two perfect examples of cars from this era that have gone astronomical in price because of the driving impressions. Now the Z06 isn't a million dollar, two million dollar career GT, nor is it a half million dollar Ford GT, which is another car from the time period. But like the E46 M3, it has a lot of the raw characteristics that perhaps were missing from the previous generation. Things like power were missing from the C4 Corvette. The E46 M3 had a little bit more power than the E36 had. And a lot of people say that the chassis and everything are like lighter, better, better handling and everything like that. Technology came a little ways from the previous generations of the C4, the E36. And well, they bred some of the most perfect cars to ever come out. You hear the word analog being thrown around all the time. Less driver assists, just you and the car. And at the end of the day, that's really what you want out of a vehicle like this. You want good, consistent power, a manual transmission, and a car that can handle that power in corners amazingly. And that's exactly what the C5Z06 provides. Now this car is a fixed roof coupe and some people don't like the way that the roof swoops down. The reason they did that is for structural rigidity, for it to be that track monster Z06 that it was meant to be. In my opinion, this car is very tame, very comfortable, very smooth. I could easily daily drive this car and not even think twice about it. I actually am going to daily drive this car during the summertime. After the Z06, they went to the C6. And if you know anything about C6 Corvette prices at the moment, they are out of this world. You can buy two Z06s from the C5 generation for one Z06 from the C6 generation. Is it really double the sports car? They did go a long way as far as development and everything went, but I don't think they should be double the price of these cars. 
Right now, the C5 market is in a little bit of a dip, and it's the perfect time to pick yourself up one. It truly is one of the most underrated cars at the moment. If you're not familiar with the statistics of the C5 Z06, let me tell you. The car weighs about 3,100 pounds, and the car makes 405 horsepower. But what is almost equally as important as the car's horsepower is the torque numbers, because this car has all the torque pretty much at 2,000 RPM. It's not like a Mustang or one of those cars that you gotta wait until it hits about 3,500 RPMs. This car, I mean, just roll onto the throttle, right? 2,000 RPMs. It's just a rocket ship. It just picks up. It is crazy how much power and torque you have down low. And I mean, that's kind of the benefit of the LS platform, right? This is the first LS car that I have owned. And <laughs> it's a riot. This car has a ton of power, right? And I'm coming from a modern day Mustang. Keep that in mind. I've driven 700, 800 horsepower GT500s. This is a fast car. <laughs> like it delivers in every point possible. It just needs like those very few things that I complained about tweaked, like the clutch master cylinder and the shifter. Those two things are things that really consistently let the car down. But once those are fixed, I mean, you basically have a rocket ship that is perfect. The car feels like you're just flying a fighter jet. The way the hood swoops up in front of you, the way the car kind of swoops down behind you, it sounds gnarly with a V8. Now this is a Z06 and I talked about it being a little kind of soft, daily drivable, but the suspension and the handling wise, I mean, it handles impeccable. Like it goes around the corners, just I pushed it a little bit. I've driven a couple miles now and the suspension tuning and dialing in is really nice. Yes, the suspension is a little on the soft side, but there isn't like body roll. It's soft as in it can take a speed bump or it can take a pothole or a little divot in the road and not destroy your back like a coilover, a proper hard coilover. If you guys didn't watch the video about all the complaints I had about the car, check that video out after this video because I mean, it's not without its flaws, right? Driving aspect wise, it has a couple driving flaws. The clutch really, the clutch master cylinder is the issue. And it just, it, the engagement is not enjoyable to me. And it's just a little unfortunate. It doesn't ruin the experience because everything else is so good. The seating position, the way the car is geared is beautiful. I, I can't quite explain it, but it's geared really, really well. <laughs> It just takes the corner like it's nothing. Whew. It really gets the adrenaline running, just doing dumb stuff in this car. And it does dumb stuff very well. Just to touch on the value perspective of this car, now we touched about like it being undervalued and everything, but not only is it undervalued, but I think it's gonna go up in value, right? This was what Haggerty's pick in the cars that are going to appreciate in value. It was this and the Nissan 350Z. When you look at the two cars, the Nissan 350Z is kind of just like, eh, right? I love it. A lot of people just hate the 350Z because of what they are. I love the Nismo. I love the 350 just in general. But I mean, I still think I'd rather have the Z06. Overall, this is just a fantastic automobile. Professionals think they're gonna appreciate. I mean, everyone I talk to just in general who knows anything about cars is like, you're not losing money on it. You're not going to lose money on the C5. Cars have hit bottom depreciation. These cars have already hit bottom depreciation and they've actually gone up a little bit since the bottom. The one thing about value is however, value increases with the less miles a car has. But I highly recommend you never buy a car that has less than, I'd say 20 or 15,000 miles that's older than 20 years. This car is a perfect example. If this car had 10,000 less miles, I wouldn't have bought it even though it was the same price of what it is. When you buy an old car with low miles, most of the time they're gonna have issues with the seals leaking and things they need to be replaced that if it was just driven a little bit more, I probably wouldn't need that. So when I talk about mileage and when I say like, oh, this car's gonna go up in value, that shouldn't scare owners who do own them currently to not drive these cars. Drive your cars, enjoy them. That's what they're made for and that's the biggest thing about them. And something the Z06 does incredibly well is drive, right? These cars should not be parked. 
it is a shame to have this car parked in your garage, but at the very least, the thing these cars require is for you to drive them. I felt like I needed to talk a little bit about the car's positives, because I did dog it in the last video, and while it is a phenomenal car, that for the price point, there's nothing better. 